Yeah. Yeah. Come here. You can listen to me. No, I need. Fine. I'm just about to start. And a very good evening to you. It's week five of the Hooks and Riffs Music Quiz. I'm Roy Stannard. Lovely to be with you again, uh, along with my sponsors. Uh, they will be done and worthy. And I uh, hope you've had a good week. You can uh, see how much my hair's growing week by week at the moment. I thought about taking a little journey up the A1, 260 miles, to a little place uh, outside of Durham called Barnard Castle. There's a great little hairdresser there. I thought I'd just pop in, but uh, I decided against it. <clears throat> I'm just going to join the ranks of the hippies, uh, maybe wear a hat, and uh, just enjoy the sunshine. I hope you had a good week so far. It's a nice time of the week to do the quiz. Seven o'clock on a Wednesday evening. That's just to prove I'm live, although doctors may argue against that. We've got 50 questions again tonight. Don't forget, it's all in favour of Off the Fence, the homeless charity in Brighton and Hove, and Gateway, uh, the women's centre that it supports and uh, runs. Hopefully a couple of people from uh, Gateway and Off the Fence are going to join us tonight. And... We also have a schools division. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about more about that in a moment. Right, we're into the quiz. Question one. Who composed the famous wedding march? I thought I'd start with something really up to date this week. Somebody said they wanted uh, questions the last 20 years. Well, there it is. That well-known song, The Wedding March. I think I've heard it a couple of times, can't think why. So question one, who composed the famous Wedding March? And just to make it really easy for you, there's a picture of him. I've given you a clue there, it's a, it's a man, not a woman. Question two, which female singer sang the James Bond theme song Goldeneye? And which two members of another band wrote it? That's a two-part question. If you get one of the other two, I think you'll get two if you get one, you'll get the other as well. And <clears throat> who sang it? Who sang Goldeneye? Don't 
So, are you feeling all fit and well? You've uh, had a hard day's work at the lounge table. Have you been working from home? And you've managed to drive home in the deserted uh, motorways and streets if you have been at work. Now it's time to chill out, maybe get a glass of something and uh, have a go at these questions. I've made them, I think, pretty easy this week. Number three, which group had a number one hit in 2004 called Five Colours in Her Hair? 2004, that's almost yesterday. So there we are, bang up to date on that one. And start saying hello to people uh, on the chat stream down on the right hand side. Do contribute to it, let me know if you're there. Uh, Joe Ashdown is back, uh, he's the king of quizzes. So watch out the rest of you. Back for the fourth week, oh, it's fifth actually. Oh no, it's his fourth. And I cut my own hair on Monday, so hopefully it doesn't have the Samson effect. <laughs> The guy knows his Bible well, that's uh, very impressive. Question four. In music, how is James Jewel Osterberg better known? And there you are, an early picture of him, which actually is a bit too easy. I should have picked out one of his high school pictures. There you go, a clue there. Thank you for joining me again for another week. And the quiz is to support uh, Off The Fence Homeless Charity based in Brighton and Hove. And at the moment, they're being accommodated by the local council, but that won't last much longer. And we'll be back at uh, firing on all guns again. Question five, what was Serge Gainsbourg and Jane Birkin's best known song? And I'm gonna give you a little bonus here. If you know Serge's country, of origin. I'll give you a clue, it's not France. As usual, if the music too loud, your own do let me know. Uh, I can hardly hear it this end, so uh, I'm relying on you guys. <clears throat> I get a little break just to give you a few seconds to uh, relax. Not very long. Question six. Which well-known female singer was a special guest at Harry and Meghan's wedding? Seems a long time ago now. In the days when they were English. who was the well-known female singer at Harry and Meghan's wedding. Jen, good evening. I hope everyone's well, she's asking, so it'd be impolite not to respond. So if anybody's not well, do uh, let her know. And uh, well, there's no point calling a doctor because there aren't any of them, no? Okay, uh, question seven. Who had a hit in 1990? with the song Killer. And to make it really easy, there's a picture of the man himself. So I will be done, they are present and correct, that's good to hear, and JPS. John Paul Sartre, as I like to call him, uh, who did very well last week and uh, was the man who asked for more recent questions. Uh, this one's only 30 years old. Question eight, which of the following operas was not composed by Verdi, Ada, Carmen, or La Traviata? Maybe my son Dominic will be joining us today. Just moved to Montpellier in France from another location in France. So he's rushing back from Montpellier High Street, presumably 
checking to see if any bars are open. They're not, like you said, in the travel. So, which of these operas not composed by Verdi? Question nine. Who had a number one hit in 1984 with Hello? picture obviously is a clue so put to one side your first thought on that one on the other hand regain that first thought that's a little clip on screen from the video that's not the singer Question 10. What are the four Christian names of the members of the pop group ABBA? <clears throat> if you get two, you get a half point on this one. If you get all four, you get the full point. As last week was a very close run thing between, I think it was Joe Les and Joe Ashdown, 39-40 were the best scores last week out of 50. Uh, that point might make a difference. That's how ABBA look now, by the way. Very good lightness. And if you'd like to donate to uh, the charity, then you can text QUIZ, Q-I-Z, to 70085. And that automatically deducts five pounds from your telephone account. Question 11. Which well-known English broadcaster lost his job after an ill-advised Twitter post about the birth of Archie? Just make it really easy. I've got a picture of Archie up there. That's Megan and Archie, of course. And this broadcaster, English, lost his job after putting up a very silly Twitter post about the birth of Archie. You can tell me who that was. Question 12. Which British band was named after Mr. Spock's Vulcan friend from Star Trek? I will be done uh, questioning the rules and saying what was the connection between the broadcaster and uh, the music. Oh, well, he's, he's a music broadcaster. There you go. So, British band was named after Mr. Spock's Vulcan friend from Star Trek. Well known British band. Hopefully, there's a picture of the character from Star Trek. Question 13, which famous Chuck Berry song included the name of a classical composer in its title? I mean, that's embarrassingly easy. I'm going to make sure everybody gets uh, a kind of plimsoll line of minimum marks this week. Woe betide anybody who dips under that. So off the fence, it's been busy recently doing uh, virtual support, uh, telephone calls, tablet paste, connections, video links with clients, and uh, looking after them in other ways as well, just providing them with information, signposting, and we're expecting the temporary accommodation situation to change radically fairly soon, so we're gearing up for that. Question 14, what type of animal was Boris, who the, sang, uh, the Who sang about? What type of animal? That's a, a very broad uh, definition. And if I narrowed that down, it'd become too easy. So, what representative of the wildlife kingdom was Boris, who the who sang about fairly early on in their career?
Question 15. What English song was the decade's most listened to track? That's the last decade, by the way, as opposed to the 1800s or just before JLS uh, hits me on the chat stream. Okay, a little pause. And uh, that will be done of giving me this fresh information at the moment. And if you want to prevent your property going through probate or inheritance tax, then they can set up a property trust for you, which could be very useful. Uh, question 16, in music, who has sometimes been called the Thin White Duke? And there you are, a very close representation of that musician in the picture. Books and Riffs is uh, a quiz in support of offence and you can donate by texting QIZ to 70085 and that will sneak five pounds out of your account. <clears throat> right, I thought we'd try something a bit different this week, an anagram. Hairy camera is an anagram of which female singer? I'll put up a, uh, okay, a fairly old picture of this particular singer. So Harry Camera is an anagram of which female singer? Give you a clue. She's not English. That narrows it down to a few million, doesn't it? Question 18. Who did Ringo Starr replace in the Beatles? I didn't know he replaced anybody, but he did. Who did Ringo Starr replace in the Beatles? And just to be really helpful, I put a picture of him at the front there. That wasn't Ringo Starr, that was, and you take, you need to give me the answer. Anybody's had to go back to work this week, physically into the workplace, then do let me know on the chat stream. And I'll uh, pour out some sympathy this end. Question 19, what nationality was pianist and composer Franz Liszt, used in cotton slang, of course. I mean, having one or two many drinks. What nationality was pianist and composer Franz Liszt? How are you doing so far? We're on question 19, so only six more to go in the first half. Question 20, which guitarist played the lead guitar solo on Michael Jackson's Beat It? I will be done saying, Paul saying these are harder this week, right? Sure. Anything to do with Michael Jackson is usually pretty easy. And there's three pictures of the guitar player there. Different stages of his development. One when he was uh, three years old, when he was 12, and the other when he was 19. They, uh, wear, they don't wear well in America. Oh, giving you another clue. <clears throat> 
So uh, we've hit a little break as well. Brilliant value deals on will writing, $29.99, including VAT. And uh, they will donate £5 to the NHS Charities Appeal. Question 21. Which US rap star has had a recent roaring success as an actor and producer? I'll give you a clue. It's on Netflix. So which rap artist pictured on screen has appeared as an actor and a producer in a long-running TV series on Netflix? Question 22, which band released the album Dark Side of the Moon? <laughs> that was in response to Thy Will Be Done's uh, Paul's comment about being harder this week. Um, it would be shameful if anybody doesn't get this. I may ask that as a separate uh, question at the end. Anybody not get question 22? The album cover. Designed by Hypnosis, I, I vaguely remember. Absolutely epoch making album cover. Question 23 Which 80s female pop star has gone on to become a highly respected gardener? Okay, an 80s female pop star. I'll give you a little clue here. She has featured in one of the quiz sessions before. That narrows it down to about 200. Which 80s female pop star has gone on to become a highly respected gardener in her own right? Doesn't do much singing nowadays. There's a lot of digging. Spends a lot of time in greenhouses. Might hum while she works there. Question 24. How many white keys are there on a standard piano? <clears throat> if you blow the screen up and count, you might get that right. See how many you can count in 20 seconds. If people say, oh, we've had that question before. No, I think the last time I asked it was how many black keys? I'd like to inject a bit of variety in the quiz, if possible. If you know the total and deduct the number of black keys you put before, then you've got the answer anyway. <laughs> Given up the Siggies, JPS has bailed. Oh no. He's giving up the, uh, the tide. He came second last week. Question 25. Who had a number one in 1974 uh, called Seasons in the Sun? Who had a number one in 1974 called Seasons in the Sun? There's a picture there of him with his wife. The wife was not the singer or involved in the group. It's such a 1970s picture that I just had to put it in. Okay, we've reached the end of the first half. Time's flown by. I've done it in 20 minutes this week. That's very good indeed. I'm going to give you a few seconds just to ensure that you've got your answers written down. We get to the serious Jeremy Paxman part of the quiz show where I put my glasses on and look seriously at it. Okay, are we ready for the answers? This is the first 25. Number one, who composed the Wedding March? Felix Mendelssohn in C major, written in 1842. And it's from his suite of incidental music to Shakespeare's play A Midsummer's Night Dream. Which female singer sang the James Bond theme song, Goldeneye? 
and which two members of another band wrote it? Tina Turner sang it. Bono and the Edge of U2 wrote it. Number three, which group had a number one hit in 2004 called Five Colours in Her Hair? That well-known band that so many others have modelled themselves on, McFly. Number four, in music, how is James Jewell Osterberg better known? It's Iggy Pop. Five, what was Serge Gainsbourg and Jane Birkin's best known song? Je t'aime. And the country that he was from uh, was the Ukraine. If you put Russia, I might let you have that. Six, which well-known female singer was a special guest at Harry and Meghan's wedding? It was Ellie Goulding. And uh, you would get that if you remember the wedding and watched it. Who had a hit in 1990 with the song Killer? It was Adamski. Which of the following seal did sing on it? You're quite right, but it was Adamski's uh, record. Which of the following operas was not composed by Verdi? Older Carmen or La Traviata, it was Carmen, who had the number one hit in 1984 with Hello, Lionel Richie, of course. Number 10, what are the four Christian names of the members of the pop group ABBA? Benny, Bjorn, Agnetha, and Anifred. Anifred was probably the difficult one. 11, which well-known English broadcaster lost his job after an ill-advised Twitter post about the birth of Archie? Danny Baker, who is a music broadcaster here most of the time anyway. Which British band was named after Mr. Spock's Vulcan friend from Star Trek, T'Pau? Which famous Chuck Berry song included the name of a classical composer? And it was Roll Over Beethoven. 14, which, or what type of animal was Boris, who the Who sang about? It's a spider. What English song, number 15, was the decade's most listened to track? It was Ed Sheeran, Shape of You, 2.4 billion streams. 16, in music, who has sometimes been called the Thin White Duke, David Bowie. Harry Camera is an anagram of which female singer? Mariah Carey. 18, who did Ringo Starr replace in the Beatles? Pete Best. What nationality was pianist and composer Franz Liszt? He was Hungarian. 20, which guitarist played the lead guitar solo on Michael Jackson's Beat It? Eddie Van Halen. 21, which US rap star has had a recent roaring success as an actor and producer? 50 Cent and the program is Power. Which band released the album Dark Side of the Moon? Easy, Pink Floyd. 23, which 80s female pop star has gone on to become a highly respected gardener? Kim Wilde. How many white keys are there on a standard piano? 52, that was question 24. And 25, who had a number one in 1974 called Seasons in the Sun? It's Terry Jacks. I don't know his wife's name, but they were inseparable, even for publicity pictures. So, okay, tot up your scores for the first half. Anybody in the 20s? Not sure what should have gone to Specsavers uh, comment is about, Paul. Oh, thy will be done, 21, that's very good. Excellent. Only four wrong. I have to send the boys around to check your paper on that one. We do the Jeremy Clarkson thing and get somebody sitting in your house. Well, we're just coming up to the second half of the quiz. Hooks and Riffs, the quiz that supports the charity Off the Fence, who, in the Great Spirit of Brighton and Hove uh, supports the homeless, uh, vulnerable women and children in the school who are going through a hard time. Okay, question number 26. What was Spandau Ballet's first single to reach number one in the UK charts? Spandau Ballet, remember them? And if you don't, there's a picture of them splendent in their wonderful 80s hairstyles. We all look like that then, didn't we? 
clear the nose. Uh, Joe Ashdown didn't, so I'm like, I don't think he was born then. But he got 20.5 anyway. That's very, very good. Somebody your age, Joe. Well done. Question 27. Which French band recorded Lady, Hear Me Tonight, in 2001? And there's a picture of them. They are French. Although the song was sung in English. So thank you to our sponsors. They will be done tonight. Uh, Paul let me know he's going to move the business remotely uh, to Spain, which uh, sounds like a very good idea. Um, which means he'll continue to be able to do uh, the quiz, which is great. So which French band recorded Lady uh, a few years ago now? Question 28. Who released an album called The Great Rock and Roll Swindle? Again, I would say this is very easy indeed. Just looking at the album cover, make sure that the name of the band are, isn't on it. Because that would be a bit too easy. So only two people owning up to their scores tonight. 21 and 20. Point 0.5 that point 0.5 could be very important so the great rock and roll swindle not the band's best known album but pretty straightforward that one question 29 which British composer and playwright wrote the musical Oliver there's a brilliant picture of him there uh, a very, very regular smoker. I forget how many dozen of cigarette, uh, cigarettes he got through a day. There was hardly a picture of him without a cigarette. Not sure about the hat, but... British composer and playwright wrote the musical Oliver. Had a lot of failures, actually, in terms of musicals that he put on. But Oliver was a huge success, made into a film. Question 30, which Beatles album was the best-selling album in the 1960s in the UK? That isn't a cross in the middle of your screen, it's actually the four Beatles lying head to head on the ground. That is a striking image, not one I've seen before, so I'm going to put that up. My wife saying four out of 25, very hard. Well, after we include some Russian questions, I think. Brilliant way of keeping your property uh, should you need to go into care or uh, in the event of passing on, you're making sure that your family inherit. Um, question 31. Who has a current hit with Stuck With You? Note the word current. Actually in the chart this week, these two. But uh, JPS had to go and do something else. That's, uh, he probably would have got this. So, very up-to-date question in the chart at the moment. I think it's number five or something like that. Not sure what the charts are anymore. Uh, charts, I think, are some sort of combination of YouTube hits, streams, and certainly not people going into record shops. Question 32. From which country do the band AHA come from? Uh, don't write the answer, an Alan Partridge series. And just to make life easier, I put a picture of the country, or at least a scene from the country, into this slide there.
Which female, this is 33, which fe famous female singer appeared as a fairy in the 2001 film Moulin Rouge? And somebody wanted multiple choice, so here you go. Kylie Minogue, Lulu, or Madonna? Kylie Minogue, Lulu, or Madonna, which of them appeared in Moulin Rouge in 2001? It just creeps into the 20 year deadline there. Question 34. The answer to this is not Whitney Houston, in case you thought I was being a little simple. Which country singer wrote the song I Will Always Love You, which was a hit for Whitney Houston in 1992? Now, some of you may question the fact that this artist actually wrote the song, in which case I'll just say which country singer had a large hit with the song before Whitney Houston, and everybody assumes it was written by them. <clears throat> Thy Will Be Done, by the way, is staying in the UK. It's not moving, it's just Paul uh, is going over to improve his tan. Question 35. Born in 1979, by what name is Alicia Moore better known as in the music world? Nora Jones, Sophie Ellis Baxter, or Pink? 1979, she was born. Alicia Moore is her real name. Is she Nora Jones, Sophie Ellis Baxter, or Pink? If you can, as a little bonus point, uh, if you can give me the British children's TV show that Sophie Ellis Baxter's mother presented, you can have a bonus for that. Apropos of nothing, it's got nothing to do with the other question in that. <clears throat> okay, question 36. Which female singer had a top 10 hit single in 1989 with Toy Soldiers. <laughs> I must have had a bit of a sense of humour going on this one. Dame Vera Lynn, Debbie Harry or Martika? Dame Vera Lynn, Debbie Harry or Martika had a hit single in 1989 with Toy Soldiers. You've got to agree, there's some real easy ones thrown in to the mix this week. Name this artist, question 37, name this artist and her biggest hit. You can have half a point for each of those. One of those pictures where her eyes seem to follow you around the room, a bit like the Mona Lisa. So, Hooks and Riffs, the music quiz entirely for charity. And the charity is off the fence in Brighton and Hove, trying to make a difference to the homeless situation over there. Three vans going around the streets uh, when the homeless are on the street to provide hygiene, laundry, and, uh, even haircuts. And that's a brilliant idea. Question 38. Which famous song contains the line, I met a girl who sang the blues and I asked her for some happy news. Which famous song contains the line, I met a girl who sang the blues and I asked her for some happy news. So which song, very famous song contains that line? I won't sing it to make it even easier. Okay, of a certain age you have to be for this one. Question 39, who was the first DJ to be heard on Radio 1? 
and just for the nostalgics amongst you, that is the logo on those days. Radio One logo. And this is question 39. Time is just coming up to 228. It's just my half hourly reminder that I am a live person sitting in front of you, in front of my music collection, or some of it. Question 40. Which band released the album Modern Life is Rubbish? I put this under the category of giveaway. Uh, there's a picture of them with hands in front of their faces, admittedly, but not too difficult. <clears throat> Which band released the album Modern Life is Rubbish? Deep philosophical insight. If it was modern, if modern life was rubbish then, I'm not sure what it is now. Okay, a little break. If you're over 60 and you are considering a power of attorney, in other words, somebody can look after your affairs and uh, be in a position to make the right decisions for you, you do have to go into a home or uh, in, other, in some other way incapacitated, then give thy will be done. But Paul, question 41. Michael Ebenezer Quadjo Amari Awiya Jr. is, and a big Labour supporter, who is he? I won't go through the name again because life's too short. But Michael Uwe Jr., who is also a big Labour supporter, who's he popularly known as? This is contemporary, by the way. Question 42. As in the music shop, what do the letters HMV stand for? And the classic brand image there. HMV, what do they stand for? By the way, you're still enjoying your status as the elite frontline force on this quiz. Uh, uh, shortly in the next week or so, going to go global with my £8,000 a month Google ad spend, which we get as a um, not-for-profit organization. Question 43, Gwen Stefani is the lead singer with which band? The Crusaders, No Doubt, or Miami Sound Machine? Gwen Stefani is the lead singer with which band? The Crusaders, No Doubt, or Miami, Miami Sound Machine? Multiple choice. It's a bit like being at school, this, isn't it? So I've forgotten what it's like to be at school, and most children have as well. But we like a multiple choice question, always seems easier. Okay, question 44. Who was the youngest member of the Beatles? <clears throat> there you are. Who was the youngest member of the Beatles? And uh, that is a picture of the member of the Beatles who is the, was the youngest. He didn't join at this age, by the way join as uh, infants and play together for 16 years before they went off to Hamburg but that is a picture of the youngest beetle it's the only one I can find that you wouldn't recognize Paul tells me his dogs are snoring I hope does that mean I need to shout at them uh, Paul or do you want the music up a bit question 45 in the 1980s what drink was Michael Jackson advertising when he was almost killed 
think that is a picture of what happened. It's the one that uh, Michael Jackson's lawyers didn't manage to stop. But uh, which drink was Michael Jackson advertising when his hair caught on fire? There's no clue in that at all, but uh, if anybody didn't know that he was almost killed, I thought you might ask that. He was shooting an ad for which drink? Okay, another little pause. Single person and couples wills. And if I will be done, we'll donate five pounds to the NHS Charities COVID-19 appeal. Question 46, what nationality is singer Leanne Rhymes? I think even Natasha could get this one. What nationality is singer Leanne Rhymes? Named after a nursery story, obviously. And Leanne, I'm not sure what it does rhyme with, actually. Fan, maybe? Question 47. Which well-known pop star's real surname is Gutmondos Titia? That's exactly as it's pronounced. She told me. Oh, there's a clue. Which well-known pop star's real surname is Gutmon Dototia. That's in the English accent, but that's how it's pronounced, more or less. And uh, just as a little clue there, there's a geezer. It's not a geezer, it's a woman. But uh, the geezer is a clue as to which country. She comes from question 48. The soundtrack to which film was the best selling album in the UK in 1978? So, the soundtrack to which film was the best selling album in the UK in 1978? Not a British film. There's a substantial clue on the screen, but I think I was also getting generous by this stage. Feeling sorry for you. Question 49. Which film did this pop star appear in last year? Which film did this current pop star appear in last year? So, he's a pop star. And... Apparently, he's an actor now. He got some good reviews for this film. And the picture is a clue and is a still from the film. So, very straight down the line clue there. Last question coming up. Question 50. Dominic arrived for the last question, pretty much. So Dominic has been following the quiz, apparently, uh, on a mobile, walking through Montpellier. Well, that is the most impressive excuse I've ever had for not sitting in on the quiz. Question 50, who had a hit in 1994 with Zombie? That's the band, very early picture. So that's the final question for tonight. Question 50, who had a hit? in 1994 with Zombie. Got old-fashioned black and white picture there. If you want a clue on that one, say yes on screen if you do. I'm going to give it to you anyway. They, come, they came from Ireland. I will be done. Just said no after I gave the clue. Sorry about that. I think it was mainly for the benefit of Dominic. 
who uh, must have been trying to remember the answers to 49 questions, which is a bit of a task. Dom is in France for a year, by the way, uh, just to answer the question on screen. Um, teaching with the British Council, been in the south of France near Aix-en-Provence, and uh, just moved to Montpellier this week. Uh, got a flat there, and that's all I know. I've got to speak to him later. Right, mark your papers. Make sure that you've got answers to all the questions. This is part two. Right, question 26, first in the second half. What was Spandau Ballet's first single to reach number one in the UK charts? And the answer was true. Which band recorded Lady Hear Me Tonight? It's number 27, Mojo, 28. Who released an album called The Great Rock and Roll Swindle? It's the Sex Pistols. And which British composer and playwright wrote the musical Oliver? It's Lionel Bart, Man in the Hat. 30. Which Beatles uh, uh, album was the best selling album in the 1960s in the UK? Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. If you just put Sergeant Pepper, I'll give you that. 31. Who has a current hit with Stuck With You? Not a very nice title for a song, is it? I think somebody else had a hit with Stuck On You. Uh, that was probably Lionel Richie as well. But Justin Bieber and Ariane Grande. Stuck With You. It's a really unromantic title for a song. 32. From which country do the band Aha come from? and it's Norway. Which famous female singer appeared as a fairy in the 2001 film Moulin Rouge? Kylie Minogue. Which country singer, this is 34, which country singer wrote the song, or at least recorded the song before Whitney Houston? Actually, the answer is, uh, the answer I'm gonna give you is Dolly Parson, and she did actually write the song. So in 1992, Dolly Parton, and I think she actually did write the song. Willie Nelson recorded it as well. If you put Willie Nelson, I'll give you half a point, because I might have misled you on that. 35, born in 1979, by what name is Alicia Moore better known as in the music world? And it's Pink, and Paul put Pink Paraffin, I think, which, uh, as far as I'm aware, is not her adopted surname, and, and it gives away your age, Paul, as well. 36, which female singer had a top 10 hit single of 1989 with Toy Soldiers? Uh, it was Martika. 37, name the artist and her biggest hit. This is the sultry looking lady looking at the screen, Sinita. And the single was So Macho. or so macro as we say in South End. And uh, probably written about Simon. Oh, I should probably imagine. Wh 38, which famous song contains the line, I met a girl who sang the blues and I asked her for some happy news. American Pie. 39, who was the first DJ to be heard on Radio One? Tony Blackburn. I think that was pretty easy. It had to be Tony Blackburn, Breakfast Show. 40. Which band released the album Modern Life is Rubbish? Modern Life is Rubbish. And uh, it's Blur. 41. Michael Ebenezer Quajo Amari Awuhu Jr. And a big is a big Labour supporter. Who is he? Stormzy. 42, as in the music shop, what do the letters HMV stand for? His master's voice. 43, Gren Stefan is a lead singer with which band? It was No Doubt. 
44, who was the youngest member of the Beatles, George Harrison. In the 80s, what drink was Michael Jackson advertising when he was almost killed? And it was Pepsi. 46, what nationality is singer Leanne Rimes? American, it's not a trick question, that one. But I'll give you an easy one. Make sure we've scored at least one. 47, which well-known pop star's real surname is Gutmond Dottier? I had it right early, and it's Bjork. The soundtrack to which film was the best-selling album in the country, or in the UK, in 1978, Saturday Night Fever. And which film did this pop star appear in last year? Now, Paul is correcting me, it was like 2017. Um, I might have written the question over a year ago, you don't know that. But uh, Harry Styles, and the film was Dunkirk. Harry Styles in Dunkirk. Question 50, who had a hit in 1994 with Zombie? And the answer is, of course, the Irish band, The Cranberries. Now, add up your scores, and we'll see who the overall winner is this week. Leaders in the first half were Die Will Be Done with, who was it, 40, I think. And Joe Ashdown had, 39 and a half. What am I talking about? It was uh, 20, 20 and a half, and I think uh, 19 and a half and 20. There we go. Uh, Thy will be done. 41. I think that's joint highest score ever. Joe Ashdown, 39.5. I admire your honesty, you guys. Because <laughs> even if you're lying, you're still lying in a sort of uh, humble and modest way. But uh, I'm sure you're not. That's very good scores, indeed. Uh, Dominic, I don't know uh, how many you managed to scrape together in the time. And Jen, I only did the second half to give you all a chance and got nine with a big smiley face there. Uh, that's absolutely right, Jen. You would have swept the board if you'd done the whole quiz. Uh, Dominic's keeping very quiet at the moment. I suspect he might have got one right uh, at the very end. Uh, or he's got the best memory known to man. So uh, thank you all for playing. Thank you to Thy Will Be Done for sponsoring the show. They're based in Goring Road in Worthing. The number's on the screen. Give them a call if you've got any questions about inheritance, financial planning, will writing, anything like that. They, they are the acknowledged experts. Uh, Dominic said he heard around 22 questions, I think. So uh, how many did you get right after that? <laughs> My wife's saying goodbye. This is very worrying when she's in the same house. <clears throat> uh, her name isn't Starcotic, by the way. That's just her YouTube name. No idea why. And uh, that's, her real name is Natasha, in case uh, you're wondering. Uh, thank you all for playing. We finished at three minutes to eight o'clock, so we're getting the timings about right. Uh, thank you all for taking part. Don't forget the quiz is in support of Off the Fence, the Brighton and Hove charity that looks after the homeless, uh, vulnerable women in crisis and during uh, the school year when uh, children at school are experiencing hard times. So Dominic says four or five and uh, <laughs> Paul Blackmore already developing his uh, Spanish accent with adios amigos. Uh, thank you very much. And it's goodbye from me. Thank you all very much for taking part. Much appreciated. And uh, you are the pioneers. Uh, so give yourselves a big pat on the back and uh, see you again next week, I hope. Bye for now. <laughs>